To draw the cervical plexus, first draw the clavicle along the bottom of the page. Next, draw the trapezius muscle. Then draw the inferior attachment of the sternocleidomastoid muscle to the anterior clavicle and its superior attachment to the mastoid bone. We leave out the sternocleidomastoid muscle belly because it overlies the cervical plexus. Cervical roots exit their respective cervical foramina underneath the sternocleidomastoid muscle belly and emerge into the anterior and posterior cervical triangles. In the midline of the page, draw seven small foramina, the jugular foramen, the hypoglossal canal, and the exit foramina of C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5. The cervical plexus is formed from the C1 to C4 spinal nerves. We include the jugular foramen, hypoglossal canal, and C5 because they comprise related anatomical structures, which we will draw here. Now let's draw the sensory nerves of the cervical plexus, all of which travel into the posterior cervical triangle. First, draw an anastomosis between the C2 and C3 roots. Three nerves are formed from this connection, the lesser occipital nerve, greater auricular nerve, and transverse cervical nerves. The greater occipital nerve, which provides sensory coverage to the back of the head, is formed from the dorsal ramus of C2. First, show the lesser occipital nerve ascend to the superior pole of the pinna and the lateral portion of the head. Next, indicate the greater auricular nerve ascends to the inferior pole of the pinna and the angle of the mandible. Then, show the transverse cervical nerve, also known as the anterior cutaneous nerve of the neck, pass anteriorly to the anterior and anterolateral neck. Now draw an anastomosis between C3 and C4. The supraclavicular nerve descends to the clavicle and covers sensation from the shoulder, posterolateral neck, and upper chest. We leave out of our diagram the minor C3 and C4 sensory branches to the trapezius muscle. Now let's draw the motor nerves of the cervical plexus. For this, we begin with the nerves that enter the anterior cervical triangle. The most important motor nerve derived from the cervical plexus is the phrenic nerve. Show it originate from the C3 and C4 cervical nerves and the C5 brachial plexus spinal nerve. Indicate it descends through the thoracic cavity to the diaphragm. Next, draw the hypoglossal nerve as it exits the hypoglossal canal and innervates the musculature of the floor of the mouth. It is primarily constituted by cranial nerve 12 However, for completeness, show C1 fibers also supply it. Thus, although cranial nerve 12 is the primary innervator of the floor of the mouth, C1, via the hypoglossal nerve, also helps supply it. Draw a separate branch from C1 that descends and connects with the C2 and C3 branches and loops anteriorly in the ansa cervicalis. This bundle provides motor innervation to the hyoid musculature of the neck and then travels back up to join the hypoglossal nerve. The upper hyoid musculature, geniohyoid and thyroid receive their motor innervation from C1 via the hypoglossal nerve, and the lower hyoid musculature, sternohyoid, sternothyroid, and omohyoid receive their motor innervation from C2 and C3 via the ansa cervicalis. Now let's draw the motor nerves from the cervical plexus that pass into the posterior cervical triangle. C1 to C4 form cranial nerve 11, the spinal accessory nerve. The C1 to C4 fiber bundle ascends the spinal canal, passes through frame and magnum to enter the cranium, and then exits through the jugular foramen as cranial nerve 11, the spinal accessory nerve. Indicate this nerve passes posteriorly to innervate the trapezius muscle, which elevates the shoulder, and also the sternocleidomastoid muscle, which turns the head. This completes our drawing of the cervical plexus.